Hello. So this is episode 66 of Umbra Coffee. It is just me today, but we have a wonderful, uh, wonderful guest, which is Catherine. And Catherine, you are, well, I'll let you introduce yourself. Hello. Um, yeah, so I'm the producer, project manager at Jive Digital, and we're the guys that are hosting Umbraco Spark this year. Um, two so, weeks time, right? Yeah, two weeks today. So yeah, in two weeks, hopefully it's all going well. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can have yeah, a glass so of wine and, and relax in, in two weeks time. Well, definitely doing that at the end of the day. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> Don't blame me. Uh, it's so uh, this is actually incredibly well timed because there's been a lot of stuff this week about not only people that we don't necessarily know in the community. So not just developers. You're you said you're a producer. Uh, yeah. And, and and so we we maybe don't hear from these people very often. Mm -hmm. It's really great to have really great to have you on. And and you've got a huge part to play in the community because you're involved in organising what is set to be the first of hopefully many events. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Um, so, uh, I might just quickly then uh, jump to a few other people that were highlighted this week. We had, let me share my screen. We had, um, where's it gone? Oh no, one second. <laughs> First technical hitch of the uh, of the day. Uh, yeah, so we had a U profile this week from, I think you pronounce it Yoka uh, in uh, Belgium. And uh, this is, uh, just kind of an introduction of uh, her. She is a project and operations manager, so not a developer, or um, but still involved in Umbraco, uh, baking brownies for the uh, Umbraco mm -hmm. 8 launch at the Belgian meetup last week. And uh, yeah, really, really nice read. And and also uh, an introduction to uh, Peter, who is a developer. He works for uh, uh, Endzone Software. So uh, yeah, firstly, just kind of getting introduced this week to some some new faces and now Catherine maybe we'll see you on a you profile or community corner somewhere in in future yeah, <laughs> but but not only has not only have we been introduced to some uh, to some fantastic new faces this week but actually we have uh, today is international women's day uh, and Umbraco HQ are busy celebrating some of the badass women in the community uh, starting with a women who code like six, highlighting six fantastic people in the community that code, um, and uh, not to forget other people, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. And Code Cabin did the same thing. So uh, we have some pictures of lots of Emmas and Lottie, and yeah. So uh, a really, really, uh, really, really good week this week for kind of introducing new faces or highlighting existing faces that uh, that have been around the community. And, and whilst we're talking about conferences, uh, Code Garden today only are showing off a few, I think they're giving away 10 tickets to women who would like to come along to Code Garden this year, completely free. So you just need to drop an email to uh, kri at umbraco.com today and it's kind of a first come first serve basis that they'll be giving away free tickets. You've, you've never been to Code Garden, Catherine? No, I haven't, unfortunately. No, I haven't been blessed to get that ticket. Steve doesn't yeah. let me go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you'll you'll get to experience some of the uh, the Umbraco community chaos, I assume, firsthand in two weeks' time. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, so yeah, there's there's we're we're really fast ramping up to uh, a ton of Umbraco. Uh, events and the reason I wasn't around last week was because I was well. I'm still in Australia and I was at UDUF. Um, I was speaking to you, Catherine, as well about this, wasn't I? On on Twitter, saying have a look at some of the pictures. It was a pretty cool day. Yeah, it looked really good. Yeah, and and the weather held out. It didn't rain. I did it. I, yeah, I, it, looked, it looked kind of a similar setup to kind of what we're expecting in terms of the room um, and the space, etc. So it's good to see something an, another event that's kind of on the similar line really yeah yeah exactly it's always reassuring as as we were saying before i'm i'm also the organizer of the uk fest and have done that for a few years which is a, a large event but it's always scary kind of seeing what other people do and going oh yeah. maybe we should be doing it like that or should we be uh exactly. should, we, should they be listening to what we do uh yeah there's so many 
different things you can do, so many ideas, but sometimes yeah. for us, it's all about kind of keeping it simple for the first event um, and just seeing how it goes. Um, and it's just great that we've had so much support. So um, no, it's looking to be like a really exciting day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it was an exciting day at UDEF last week. So Shannon's actually shared a bit of a write up on what happened. Uh, there was a hackathon and he's shared some of his uh, talk slides as well, as well as sharing that UDAF will be in Sydney in 2020. So uh, they've, they've hopped on to organizing that one pretty pretty damn quickly after after this year's event. I guess you're you're looking forward to jumping in in three weeks time organizing <laughs> Spark for 20, yeah, 2020. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, uh, I, you may have changed your mind directly after the event when you've uh, got a glass of wine in your hand and you can yeah, <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so, uh, Spark itself is has been had a super busy week, uh, right? I, I saw a few things. Uh, you've taken on a couple new sponsors. Yeah, we've had um, some additional sponsors added to the bag this week, which is great. Um, we've got Moriyama now who's supporting us, as well as WooCommerce. Mm -hmm. um, we've also had uh, a number of speakers confirmed this week. We've got Kenneth Jacobson from Abraco HQ. Um, we've got uh, Anthony Dan from Cogworks. So we've got you know a really exciting lineup, which we're really um, you know pleased to see. Yeah. Um, and it's just yeah, it's just really great to see so much support from the Embraco community as well as the wider industry as well. So um, yeah, yeah, we're really grateful for that. Yeah, and and it's because the, the conference itself is is more innovation focused and future thinking, isn't it? So yeah. so perhaps slightly different to than the usual process that everyone or every other organizer goes through of finding speakers that are talking about something maybe that they've worked on in the past. This is slightly different. How have you found the process of finding those speakers and uh, and getting some interesting talks lined up? Yeah, I guess it was um, obviously challenging at first, just, you know, where do we start? Um, but I think, you know, social media has been a great platform for that. Um, and obviously having um, the guys in Drive Digital as well, who are kind of involved with the Embraco community, they've been able to suggest certain people that we could speak to. Um, but I think generally, um, just from kind of blogging and posting on social media, putting everything on the website, I think everybody's got a good idea in terms of what we're looking for um, and kind of more forward thinking and looking at Embraco Headless and AI and, you know, we're wanting people to be able to go away and learn something and be able to adopt this in their day to day kind of development. Um, so I, I think I think it's gone well so far. You know, we've been you know picky at times with certain talks. Um, so we think we've got a really good, really good topics this year. Yeah, it's it's one of the most difficult things is going to uh, going to enjoy. You've mentioned a ton of things there. That you've got you've got uh, some really really great speakers from HQ, the community uh, on really really future thinking topics. So as you said, headless. Uh, kind of stuff, and we'll be doing an umbra coffee. Or I, I will be doing an umbra coffee. Yes, that's 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 really cool. Yeah, uh, and uh, you're not the only conference that's been actively trying to build up a really really good lineup. Because I saw this this week, which is from Code Garden, and Code Garden uh, happening in May have just announced a new speaker from Microsoft, Maria, who's going to be talking about documentation. So it's not necessarily that we have to always have talks purely based on. The latest and greatest tech. This can be actually ways that we can improve our lives in the future as well. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think Spark is mostly is mostly technical, isn't it? But then there's there's uh, I, Philip's talk that I was I saw here actually is is pretty good. It's yeah. quite broad. It's not too specific, and there should be something in there for for everyone. Exactly, I think there's something for everyone. Whether you're a producer, whether you're a tester, whether you're a developer, or whether you're a client, actually. So um, I think we. Covered all angles, and yeah. we hope somebody, everyone, can take something away from it. Yeah, definitely. Now, uh, you, you've I've I've also seen on Twitter, and I know this pain because uh, we're we're two weeks out, and you want to make sure that you've got all your numbers right, and you've 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 bought all of your uh, lunches and all of that stuff. So uh, I saw, I think. Pete Duncanson did the initial tweet, which said, "Like, if you're thinking of going to a conference, please just buy a ticket and let them know." Yeah. Um, and uh, I know Steve tweeted that you're you're really really close to the target 
uh, for yeah. what you want Spark to be for this year, but there's just a few more people that need to buy their tickets. So uh, I, I feel the pain here because I've, I've experienced this uh, on a very large scale. But uh, yeah. what, would you, what would you say to people who are maybe thinking about coming to Spark, haven't got a ticket yet? Uh, why should I they think, come? Yeah, I mean, definitely book, book a ticket now. I mean, it's, it's going to be the first event um, in Bristol. We've got a great venue overlooking the harbour. Um, so hopefully we're going to have some sunshine and some beers at the end of the day. Um, but apart from that, we've got some really great speakers confirmed. Um, we've had a huge amount of interest. Um, and yeah, we've got some great swag from Rambraca as well, as well as Jet Brains. So we're going to be running some competitions on the day. Um, but yeah, essentially, we've, it's, it's going to be a great event, great lineup. Um, and I think everyone will be really pleased within the community that we're doing something a bit different. Um, and it would be a shame for, for anyone to miss it. Yeah, I'm. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm. I'm originally from Bristol. Haven't uh, lived there in a very long time, but uh, yeah, it's it's a great city. And as you said, the wonderful, uh, famous Bristol sunshine. <laughs> uh, should be. Yeah. We can have we can have some beers at the end of the day, and it should be yeah. a really, really fun yeah. day overall. Yeah, it's going to be you know quite informal. Um, you know, there'll be some good opportunities for people to kind of network and just chat generally. We've also got an evening social, um, so everyone can kind of just chill out at the end of the day and chat about what they've learned as well as just have some fun. So mm -hmm. it'll be good. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to take this opportunity to jump to a couple of things that have been released this week. Um, so uh, we all know that last week V8 came out. It was the big news of the week. Uh, and then uh, we had um, a couple of packages relating to V8 now being released. So we have this Skybird package manifest editor, which allows you to edit package manifest files in the back office. Um, we've had uh, a release of a content app from uh, Paul Seal uh, and also Nick Rimington that's a, to edit images in the back office, a really nice innovative use of the content apps feature. I believe they submitted this for the, the competition, but it maybe didn't get selected, sadly. Um, Supportly, another content app from Soren, uh, and Paul has updated his starter kit to work on V8 too. So uh, everyone's going full steam ahead on V8. And I noticed that Steve, uh, coming back to Spark again, has also been pretty busy getting stuff working on V8. He ported the Spark site over to V8 in uh, on yeah. Friday last week. Yeah, he did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and I believe had a pretty busy Friday because then there was a, a small issue with Umbraco Cloud that it was running on. It was and, a bit temperamental. Yeah, and, and it went down for a while, Cloud went down. So I think Steve mm -hmm. then went ahead and set it up on Azure, which the folks at Moriyama have done a fantastic job of uh, documenting their process and their recommended way. It kind of saved a few people, I think. But then uh, Steve, when running on Azure, was able to provide some benchmarks and some statistics about exactly how the site was performing and before and after and shows a, a far nicer picture. So uh, that's really, really exciting. And then in related to Steve's benchmarks, uh, the U Benchmarks project ran by the team at Offroad Code uh, they released their V8 statistics this week as well. So uh, seems like everyone is really, really jumping on V8, and then we'll be seeing more of it in the coming weeks and months. Spark, and then the German festival uh, coming up, Code Garden. Uh, there's, there's a ton of other events that are happening. So yeah, exciting time. Uh, okay, I think there's only a couple more things I had on my news. There has been a lot that's happened this week. We've had a script article. Uh, Umbraco HQ have released a new training course. Um, there is, uh, oh yes, that's the one thing I wanted to mention. So buddying people up. We started this episode by talking about some new faces in the community and uh, how, how that's really great to see, but maybe it can be a slightly... Uh, Daunting thing to do. I, I, Catherine and I were talking before this that actually your first kind of jump into the Umbraco community spotlight being on Umbra Coffee is potentially a little bit scary. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, there's there's a few other ways to do it. So the UBuddy program, if you are going to Code Garden, UBuddy uh, closes today and you don't have very long to sign up. I think it closes at 5 p.m. today. And then there'll be assigning buddies on Monday. This is uh, a way of pairing up more experienced Code Garden attendees with 
uh, people who've never been before. So uh, by all means, jump on uh, the website and sign up for that. And also uh, the Umbraco Mentor Matching Program, which uh, Barry O'Kane has, has started along with a few other people in Scotland. Uh, yeah, there's uh, already people getting really interested and they're looking for more mentors. So if you want to get involved, I think that's a really fantastic uh, way of doing so. Damn, that was a lot of news. We've we've kind of condensed everything into a really short period of time. Um, but like I say, really looking forward to Spark. Is there uh, is there any maybe last minute things you want to say? I'm, I'm sure you've got a lot of organizing to get back to and projects that you're still managing at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, essentially, you know, anyone who hasn't got a ticket, buy a ticket now. Um, like, like I said, we've got some great talks. Have a look at the website and see who we've confirmed. Um, we're going to have some competitions on the day. We're going to have some really good um, swag bags that we can give away. We've got the evening social, we've got lunch, all the coffee and tea you can drink, beers at the end of the day. Um, and just, yeah, essentially some really informative uh, talks. So um, yeah, we hope to see as many people there as possible. Um, we've ordered all the t-shirts now, so um, but we've ordered enough to you know accommodate another another few people. So um, yeah, hopefully we see lots of you there. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I'll be I'll be flying back to the UK the, the two days before, so I'm probably going to be pretty jet. Yeah, <laughs> should be really. <laughs> Yeah, should be great. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping there's a sufficient amount of coffee to keep me awake. There definitely will be. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Really well. Awesome. That's that's all we could ask for. Uh, okay, I think that's it. Oh, the, the final thing is Martin's not here because he's busy uh, getting a tattoo done. So uh, we'll <laughs> we'll wish him the. He's probably squirming in a chair somewhere right now. Uh, so we'll uh, wish him the best of luck with that. And uh, well, well. <laughs> thank you to Catherine for joining me. Um, it's been uh, it's been really great. No, thank you for having me. Great. Have an awesome weekend, everyone, and uh, we will see you next Friday when I believe Martin will be back. Thank mm -hmm. you. Cheers.